What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. My name is Miles, here with my wife, Adriana. Hey, guys. We are here at AT&T Stadium, home of the Dallas Cowboys. Woo yeah, and what is one of the coolest RV shows we have ever been to. It's actually the coolest RV show. Oh, by far. Yeah, so definitely the coolest one we've been to so far. There are so many RVs here. It would take us over a month to film every RV here at this show, but we're doing our best to film as many as we possibly can for y'all. And there are so many cool models out here to take a look at. They have RVs outside and inside the stadium and some really cool options like the one that we're gonna show you in this video here. So let's go. We are taking a look at this Forest River Gray Wolf. Now let me know, could you see yourself camping in something like this? This is gonna be a more entry level, couple styles camper, very lightweight, easy to tow. It's a 22 CE, and you'll be able to see the floor plan layout on the screen as well as the specs for what this looks like here. And it's gonna be a lightweight, easy to tow option again. So this is gonna be something where if you have a half ton truck, definitely gonna have no problem towing this. Maybe if you've never towed an RV before, it's gonna be very easy and manageable. So as we go inside, we'll start with going inside. You have a solid step going in. So I really like that. And I also have to point out real quick, it has a solid glass door there. So that looks really, really cool as well. The whole thing isn't a glass door from the inside. It does just have the window there. So it's not gonna have a full, you know, see-through door, but it is all a glass panel that looks really nice. And then this is a little protection piece there that prevents that from banging against the side of the RV. It also has a friction hinge door. So if this were to like swing out of your hands there, it kind of stops on its own, which is nice. Now, as we go inside, I think one of the biggest things is what are your thoughts about the interior colors in here? Cause this is a very bold look. What do you I think? I like it. You like it? I do too. It kind of caught my attention. It's very different than what you traditionally see, but it's not bad. Now, the one thing that I really didn't like is it does have an accent light. You can see your panel right here. That's gonna be your control panel that you have right when you walk in. Nice, because it has a motion sensor, so when you walk by it, all of this will light up and then those lights will go off after you haven't been around it for a period of time. But you hit this accent light switch and watch this it completely changes the whole feel in here with that blue LED light. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. <laughs> Y'all let us know what you think. Blue light on or blue light off? Yeah, so that's on and then off. I don't know why they put a blue LED light there. I don't know who's in control of that decision and why they made that decision, <laughs> but I don't know, it's a weird, I just don't know why you would pick blue. The one thing I'd really do like though, with the accent light, they also have this gray wolf light that shines down on the floor from right here. So that is really cool. That is definitely a unique feature with that accent light. I am gonna turn this off for the rest of the video just because it's not my preferred thing to see. But besides that, I really think this is a very practical floor plan. The only thing that some people may want, and you can let us know what you think, you don't have a privacy door to the bedroom. So your bedroom just has a privacy curtain, but look at how nice that bed sits in that space and how symmetrical it looks. I think it looks really nice. What do you think, babe? I think I prefer a door. You think so? But y'all let us know, what do you think? Do you have to have a door to your bedroom? Do you not mind having this open concept here? I think really what it, it gives you is a bigger feel in the travel trailer in general because you don't have a partition there to the bed. Well, I just kind of want to, I'm going to play with this. Yeah, put the curtain out. Cool. All right, yeah. So you're going to have your storage space here. This is really nice looking cabinetry. I mean, this, this looks like this is just a stained wood, which if that's the case, I mean, that is really rare in a travel trailer. Usually you're only seeing um, wrapped 
particle board. And this looks like it's an actual stained wood there that is really, really impressive. That means it's gonna look like this forever, essentially. If you have a That's wrap- nice. Yeah, if you have a wrapped cabinet door, it's eventually, it, it not, doesn't always happen, but it can peel. Um, you saw you have your privacy curtain there. Sorry, I was- Oh, sorry. Yeah. There you go. You have your privacy curtain there. So you'll be able to have that. And then it has the rail system across the top for that to slide back and forth. And then you can see it goes right to the foot of the bed. It also looks like a really spacious bed. So I'm going to lay down in here real quick. Babe, if you want to, or actually while you're fixing that, I'll see what's underneath the bed real fast. Not a strut assisted bed. So you have to hold it up on your own, but it is going to be accessible to the pastor storage up front as well. And then you'll have your storage space down underneath there. So this is an entry level travel trailer because it's aluminum sided with wood framing. So when we lifted this up underneath here, I should have <laughs> said this while this was up. You can see all the framing underneath here is all wood. All the framing in your entire RV is all going to be wood framing. So that's gonna be consistent throughout the entire RV with all your framing in the sidewalls and things like that. And then you have the metal aluminum siding, which is making this an under $30,000 travel trailer, which makes it very affordable for, for someone looking to get into camping. But anyways, let me get into the bed real quick. See how big this bed is. Cause this looks like a really good size. Oh yeah. This is like a residential queen. This is a really, uh, it, I always have a hard time with the exact measurements, but this feels pretty dang close. It might not be quite as long, but it's definitely at least a 73, 74 inch long bed. And then not the most comfortable space to like sit up in here, but kind of comfortable. It has a pretty aggressive arch there. So something to consider, but it's a pretty good size bed for this size travel trailer for sure. But that's the bed space there. Um, outlets and USB ports on both sides. So you will have those on both sides of the bed. So you come around this way into this space. You're going to have your slide out here. This here, I don't, someone left that in here. I don't know what this is. It's a little light. <laughs> if we need a flashlight, now we have a flashlight. Um, this is going to be a jackknife sofa. You'll have a little bit of storage down underneath there, but not a ton. And this will make into a bed that's not going to be super long because I'm 6'2 and I could maybe lay diagonal on this at best. I could definitely sleep on it because I'm not a picky sleeper, but it's going to be maybe about 5 foot 10 in length or so. Then this will go back up like so. It's nice and easy to convert. And this is a really soft feeling material. So I really like that it as well. Soft. Yeah. Look how big the window is back here. Really big window. And then a pull down. Ooh. This, these are those curtains that have, if you want some light to come in, you can leave it like that there. If you want more light to be blocked out, then you can leave it like that right there. I love the option. Yeah. I forget what they call these curtains there. If you know online, let us know. But definitely a different style uh, or um, shade than you typically see. Do you want to tell them about how they don't have the beams, but you do have the curtains? Oh yeah. So you don't have the valances down the window is what she's talking about, but you have the curtains here. So that will help block out some of the light coming in through the side of the window when you pull that curtain down. Then coming over here, pretty interesting. You have a cloth fabric on your dinette table. I kind of like that. Um, the thing I like about cloth is it's not going to be as intense and things like sunlight and stuff like that with taking in the heat. So like that, prefer that. And I think it's really comfortable as well. There's not gonna be any storage access from the sides here. And then this looks like there's a component down underneath here potentially, but you can access this from, let me take the cushions out. You can access this from right here, I believe. Uh, actually, nope, it is screwed down in the middle. So they make it look like you can get down underneath there. And you can if you unscrew some things, but there's going to be components underneath that one. Let's check underneath the other table because this is important in smaller travel trailers to know what kind of storage you're working with. So if you appreciate the extra extent we go to to show you every bit in detail of these RVs, definitely hit the like button and subscribe down below. Oh, and you know what? This one's screwed in as well. So no access to storage underneath the dinette table. Did not expect that had to uh, just look at it for myself to know that because a lot of times you expect to see storage underneath there and in this model, just don't happen to have it. So let us know, is that a deal breaker for you on something like this or can you live without it? Although you don't have that, you do have some big storage up here. And again, I'm really impressed by the cabinets and the fact that these are a stained wood cabinet in this class of travel trailer. That is just really not heard of in this class. So really like that again. 
more storage here. And then spot for a TV on the wall here. Are you somebody that needs a TV in your camper or can you live without it? Because that's another thing that I'm always curious with floor plans like this and entry level campers, they typically don't come with TVs, but a lot of people don't put a TV in there even though they have the option to mount one here. So would you put a TV in here or can you live without it? As we go here, this is gonna be a Gerard 12 volt refrigerator and latches there to hold it closed while you're going down the road. It's gonna be about 10 and a half cubic feet or so. Look at this, this is like a little mini pantry. I didn't even notice this when we first walked in here. It's like a little baby pantry. <laughs> that is huge. Is there any light in there? No light in there, but that is still a massive pantry that space. That is massive. Now, what you give up to get a pantry space this size is some additional countertop space. This is not the only brand that makes a floor plan like this. There are other brands that will extend the countertop space to wrap into this area. This brand decided to make this all a pantry in the expense of your countertop space. So do you like that? Do you not like that? Let us know. Personally, I feel like I could live with it. I don't know how much I would need the countertop so space. where are you gonna prep? Outside. Do most of your stuff outside. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. You're very limited on your prep space. You're not wrong. Um, you do have the cover for your sink. And can we talk about how awesome this sink looks? I mean, this is like a fifth wheel class sink here that you're getting in a travel trailer with this apron style sink. And it is like this charcoal stainless steel. That is really nice as well. Then you have a two burner or a stove there. I almost called it a faucet. <laughs> two burn, wait, what am I doing? <laughs> Whoa, all that up. I looked over here and then started talking about this. You have a two burner stove here and it's a north to south two burner stove. And then you have a black faucet Wow, there we go. I really mixed that up. <laughs> and then you do have the cover here if you need some additional countertop space, but I don't know how practical it is to be taking this on and off all the time. So. Man, this is really little. It is a really little countertop space. The when more you... I come over here next to you, I'm like, we can't even be here at the same time. No, uh-uh. Yeah. You do have a skylight in here though, so this is nice. <laughs> Letting in more natural light into this area, so that really illuminates this space. You have a glass door there, and then that'll open. Nice deep storage through there. Wi-Fi connection up top. Yep, can get Wi-Fi in here. Gonna have a vent fan outside of the RV. Yep, that'll vent air outside of the RV when you're cooking, and a light here, and then a standard size RV microwave. Now, another thing this one does not have is an oven. So they opt not to give you the oven so you have more storage space. Again, really just doubling down on all the storage as a lot of people don't always use a oven in an RV in this class. I mean, my family, we've hardly ever used our oven in our fifth wheel. So again, one of those things you let us know, do you need to see an oven in an RV you would consider purchasing or can you live without one? Two outlets here on this side. And then it looks like those are the only outlets in the kitchen, two lights up here. So lots of light plus more lights up on the top here as well. So lots of lighting. Great job with that. Yep. And then two big windows for even more natural light. Now, before we get any further into this video, I wanna let you know real quick about changes that have gone on with us. A lot of y'all might know by now, but just in case you don't, I quit my job in sales. I was in a sales position for almost four years and my wife and I started our company, Firmly Unbound. I'm writing books in our RV Buyer's Guide collection and our first book is out so that you can find that on firmlyunbound.com. And then we're gonna have more merchandise and apparel coming soon as well. So check that out. You can find everything about our business and what we're doing at firmlyunbound.com. Now let's go into, or actually real quick before I, this caught my eye, look at how big this speaker is. I don't it's know massive. the, I don't know the brand. I've never heard of Driven before, but that is a huge speaker. That caught my eye as I was coming to the bathroom here. And when you go into the bathroom, I'll kind of like show the space first, then I'll get in the shower. It's a pretty standard size bathroom that you would see in this floor plan as, you know, there's many different brands that make this style floor plan. And your max ceiling height in here is maybe 6'4". I'm 6'2", and this is probably like 5'11", 5'10", to this point. And then this is really low. I mean, where your shower head is mounted is like nice. at my chest. So I would definitely have to lift this up. Um, but I imagine this being more like a weekend camper, not like a long extended camper. So sometimes I can go a whole weekend without a shower. Y'all can judge me if you want, but <laughs> I've gone weekend camping trips without a shower before, and I would be perfectly fine gonna have big storage through there and then this is indicating this is gonna be what looks like a tankless water heater control panel there so I believe this is gonna have a tankless water heater on it so like that as well sink there and then storage down underneath the sink 
And then finally your toilet tucked to the side there. Not a whole lot of floor space in the bathroom. Not but, at all. But it does have a nice big vent fan. So you get a big vent fan up in there. <laughs> That's good. So get all those smells out of there when you need to. And then finally, two little drawers here that I think we completely oh, missed. Tiny, tiny. Those are actually those pretty. Are they're very deep. Very lengthy. Yeah. These are actually good size. So you have two of those drawers there. So that's everything on the inside. You let us know what you think. And now let's go head outside. Maybe we should turn their, uh, oh, also, you have your um, air conditioner controls here and your radio controls there. I forgot those. And then we're gonna turn on the accent light for them so they can come back in with the accent light. Because we're at an RV party. Yeah, gotta have the lights on for the RV party. All right, so as we go along the outside, baby, you just kind of made an observation. Let them know what well, you said, what you told me. <laughs> Walking out there made me just a little sleepy and I'm like, was it the colors? Was it the comfiness? Was it not bright enough? I'm like, why am I sleepy now? Yeah, it does feel very homey in there. So you definitely can get sucked into the comfort in that space. But outside, really like the color scheme. You have this really nice white metal aluminum um, front cap area. And then these are sticker decals on there. Two 20 pound propane bottles, a power tongue jack, and then your spot for your battery there. And then when you come down underneath, you're going to have manual stabilizers. Now here's a little hack for you that my dad never told me. I used to hand crank these down every time my family went camping. You can get a drill bit that would just connect to this spot right here and use a drill and that will shoot that up and down very quickly. Definitely the preferred way to go about that. Propane quick connect line here so you could connect a grill here that would connect to your propane bottles up front. And then going down underneath, you can see it is not an enclosed underbelly. So your water tanks and water lines are exposed down underneath here. So that is something to know if you are going to camp in colder conditions, like below freezing conditions, your furnace is not going to be keeping those warm. Now that doesn't mean you can't camp in colder conditions because you can camp without water in your tanks. You can just use a city water connection at your campsite, or you can bring even water jugs that you would keep inside the RV. There's different ways to go about it but that is something to keep in mind. Really like that you have the accessory rack on the back with the spare tire as well, but you can put additional cargo on here that is on your rear bumper, already comes with that. And it already has a backup camera installed. So great if you're a first time RVer and you're intimidated by backing up an RV, have a backup camera standard on there. You're seeing the new equipment for 2023 with this Lipper attachment there. That is where a retractable ladder from Lipper can attach into. This isn't gonna come with the ladder, but you can purchase that. And then that would be a ladder you could use anywhere. You could use it in your home, you can use it with your RV, you can use it to get on your roof, things like that. So I know this might be weird, yeah. but I really like the rims. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they're all black. So nice look on those as well. Standard leaf spring suspension, and then your tires on here. This is a um, 205-75R14 tire on there spot to place a TV out here. And then as we've been at this RV, what everybody is saying as they walk by is they love how big this window is. This is a massive window on your campsite. So lots of light coming in and then a great view coming out as well. Have your same blue LED light in the awning. Again, I don't know why they went with that color. I don't know, but you have the blue light. Your LED light will be used or can be used whether your awning is in or out but with it out, that is going to cover this, almost the entire length of your RV and give you a great camping space out here. And then you'll have that LED light, whether your awning is in or out. You have the same blue lights in your outdoor speakers. And these are the driven outdoor speakers as well. One here and one there. And then that's pretty much everything. I don't think, I can't remember if I showed you the pass-through storage and it doesn't actually pass through to the other side. But one thing that's a little weird is it is carpet lined here. So let me know your thoughts on that. What do you think about that? And then there's a solar charge controller in here. So this makes me think there is solar on the roof, although I do not have a ladder to get up onto the roof. So I can't tell you exactly how much solar, but probably just enough to keep your batteries charged. Gonna try to get back over to this other side here and show you what's going on over here. Had to squeeze through there. Okay, so you do have a tankless water heater. Whenever you see this circle spot on the water heater, that is going to be a tankless water heater there. Runs off propane, outdoor shower here that is going to give you your hot and cold water outside. And then your fresh water fill and your city water connections will be on this side of the RV. City water is going to be your water connection at an RV park or a campground. And your fresh water connection is if you're wanting to fill your fresh water tank. 
going to have a cable driven slide mechanism on here. So a cable driven slide is going to push and pull all four corners at the same time. So this goes in and out evenly each time. And then that's pretty much everything. All your dump valves are going to be down behind the axles back over there. So everything will come to one central spot there that is, or I guess one um, spot, not central to the RV, but one spot on the RV that everything goes to. So when you dump your black and gray tanks, it's all coming out of one spot and you don't have to use any Y connectors or anything like that. And that's pretty much everything. So babe, you want to tell them where to go real quick? Make sure to check out www.firmlyunbound.com. Yep, go check that out. See all the new exciting stuff that we're up to. And until next time, we'll see you out camping.